Welcome back everyone. In this Sahih Hadith that Muslims will call weak at the end of this video, we read of a test of prophecy applied to Muhammad in the form of three questions. Fortunately, Gabriel revealed the answers to him. Since these were answers that only a prophet would know, Muhammad's prophethood was proven. The end. Okay, maybe not. Let's break this down a bit more. What is the first portent of the hour? Muhammad's answer? A fire that will apparently affect people on the entire earth. Now this is an exceedingly weak response. Cosmic disturbances like fires and so forth are standard descriptions in eschatology. We see this in a range of end times texts from the Bible and far beyond. I could show you examples of this all day long. You can pause the video and read these if you like. So when asking for signs of the end times, a large fire is not exactly an answer that strikes me as very insightful. The same thing goes for gathering people from the east and the west. Again, this is a very common end times motif. There's nothing in this answer that's impressive. However, three questions were asked of Muhammad to alleviate any doubt. So, let's move on to the next one. What will be the first meal taken by the people of paradise? Answer, fish liver. Ah, a seemingly novel, original answer from Gabriel to Muhammad in response to this question. So novel, in fact, that you may find yourself wondering, as this person did on Islam QA, why is the liver of fish the first food of the people of paradise? The answer to this question is threefold. First, this is authentic. The second part of the answer is that they do not know the answer. And third, fish is good for you. Unless your name is Jonah, presumably. And fourth, Allah knows best. Was this answer helpful? No, but it's the second part of that answer that got my attention. Here, the sheikh, or whoever's answering the question, says they could not find anything to indicate the wisdom behind the fish food of paradise. And that is where I come in, apparently. This is going to sound odd, but it's very well known in scholarship and very well attested in the texts. In ancient Near Eastern literature, there are chaos creatures. These are well known. These chaos creatures oppose the order of creation. Now, obviously, the hope in this cosmic battle is that order will triumph and defeat chaos. When this occurs, we have very vivid images of devastating end times judgment where chaos is literally devoured. Chaos creatures like Behemoth and Leviathan are served as a victory meal. Put simply, creatures like Leviathan frequently described as a fish, are served at the messianic banquet. Here are some examples. And behemoth will reveal itself from its place, and leviathan will come from the sea, the two great monsters, which I created on the fifth day of creation, and which I shall have kept until that time. Until that time is stock end times phrasing. And they will be nourishment for all who are left. But to Leviathan you gave the seventh part, the watery part, and you have kept them to be eaten by whom you wish, and when you wish. And with some embellishment from the Talmud, what did the Holy One blessed be he do? He castrated the male, Leviathan, and killed the female, and salted it for the righteous in the world to come. And here's a humorous follow-up from the Talmud as this conversation continues. The text translated from Hebrew is plain type, and the text translated from Aramaic is in italics. If you wish, I shall say that the female fish preserved in salt tastes better. And if you wish, I shall say, because it is written, there is Leviathan whom you have formed to sport with. And with the female, that would not be seemly. Here too, in the case of the behemoth, why not preserve the female in salt? Salted fish tastes good. Salted meat doesn't. So we see from a wide variety of pre-Islamic texts that fish is on the menu for the first meal of the people of paradise as well. Again, there's absolutely nothing exclusively prophetic about having this knowledge. Regarding number three, I've done two videos on that already. The answer Muhammad gives is simply recycled ancient Greek medicine, and it's demonstrably wrong. So with these answers, Muhammad sure seems to have gotten himself into quite a pickle. Answers to these questions are supposed to be known only to a prophet. But very similar answers are widely documented in pre-Islamic sources. Additionally, we know from genetics that answer number three is, again, wrong. It's a ridiculous answer. 
And since Gabriel told this to Muhammad, both of them are wrong. If Gabriel can't be trusted to reveal correct information, how can he be trusted to reveal the Quran? Or perhaps this hadith is fabricated, in which case Muslim scholars forged a hadith in a horribly failed attempt to make it appear as though Muhammad had passed a prophecy test by giving answers to questions about future events with the help of Gabriel. I could write a very long video on the sheer ridiculousness of Muhammad's failed prophetic tests, but I'll leave it to you to further contemplate the well-attested yet elusive mysteries of parents racing to discharge before each other, the ubiquitous yet unknown motifs of cosmic end times conflagrations, and omnipresent yet absent literary tropes about feasting on eschatological fish in paradise, none of which, mind you, were known by anyone before the 7th century except for a prophet who was lucky enough to have an angel reveal this exclusive knowledge so he could pass his prophecy test. Let's summarize. This hadith destroys Muhammad and Gabriel. Don't forget Islamic websites are the last places to go for informed responses. And remember, Allah does not know best. I hope this answer was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.